I've never been part of a home defeat like that in my career, and I don't intend to ever again. I'll do everything I can to make sure it doesn't happen again. Questions? How does, and I asked your players this, how does a team that's competitive on the road at Clemson gets a big win over West Kentucky at home a month later is blown out twice by a conference opponents the way you guys have? What, what has changed or what's different? Why? Our health has changed, but that's an excuse and no one wants to hear it, but it's fact. I was always taught that there's no reason complaining because half the people don't feel sorry for you. The, the other half are kind of glad you're, you're in that spot. So that's where we're at. That, if you want to look for a change, that's a change. Now, that, that can't mean that this is where we are now. And you, know, you contrast that with an effort at Kent the other night where I went to one point. There are some things I just don't have answers for right now. There's no way around it. Uh, I'm interested in finding solutions, though, and I will do everything in my power to do that. What kind of things um, are eluding you? What do you not have answers for? Well, we, why we can't translate how we run our offense and practice to games. We, our simple entering of the ball becomes difficult at times. That, that defies me. I mean, we do passing drills. We do catching drills. We, um, When we play, you know, we just got off a Kent game where I lauded the guy for guys for about 18 possessions where they had a couple of reversals. We got some nice cuts and got really good looks out of it. And we come out tonight and we clearly weren't as interested in reversing the ball. Uh, it ultimately, it all falls on me because it's my job to make sure we do those things. That, that's, that's it. Obviously, there's been struggles offensively, but at the same time, Toledo seems to be pretty red hot. Do you think that also works against your guys when they maybe have a tough possession or they get a, sh a shot maybe that they wanted and didn't hit, and then at the other end, Toledo? Well, I think in the first half, every mistake we made, be it a missed layup or a turnover, turned into a three on the other end in about five seconds. Uh, I mean, we only got scored out, outscored by 30 at the arc tonight, so yeah, that, that was a factor. Uh, and once a team gets comfortable, it's really hard to put the clamps back on. We've done a good job at times this year of making sure the teams don't get comfortable early and then we can hang around a little bit. But floodgates were open from the get-go tonight and uh, they ran their offense really crisply. They, they hit all their marks. They made the correct passes and uh, we simply weren't very good. Uh, if this game is played in the paint, it's 34-34. You guys tend to take pride in being able to shoot the ball from outside the arc normally, identity-wise. Obviously, health changes things at times, but I ask the guys this. What does the identity of this team have to be going forward to be more competitive in nights like this? What, what identity are you looking for from this team? But the players said compete every night, but what about to identity me, defense? Yeah, to, to me, compete is just a phrase, right? I mean, compete... You got to go deeper than that. You can't just say, "Oh, we got to compete harder." Dougie Taylor competed hard tonight. Now that's like saying, "Boy, the Titanic had really nice lawn chairs tonight." Right? I mean, it's that doesn't get you anywhere. But he competed. Oh, so he wasn't checked out. At the same time, what we're trying to do offensively, what we're trying to do defensively, is the same as we tried to do all season long. And at times, we've done it really well. That's put the ball at the front of the rim early in the possession after a couple reversals, and then play inside out. Whether that's, you know, you have that move inside. Uh, tonight, Doug did have that a couple times. Or whether it's <clears throat> drawing two guys and playing out of that. Uh, I do know this. Whatever you're trying to do doesn't work very well if you've got some people in some really tough shooting slumps right now. So, ball's got to go in the hoop, too. With, with that being a problem, have, have you looked at, at this team strategy-wise at the idea of maybe slowing the game down a little bit, playing more from the half court, changing the offensive strategy at all to maybe fit the way that these guys seem to be stuck in a rut. I mean, we know these guys can shoot better, but they're not. So have you looked at maybe making changes? I know it's tough midseason, but there's... Well, one of the biggest problems with making sweeping changes has been lack of practice time. Put in changes when one guy's not practicing, he's never practiced it when he goes into the game. Now, that being said, yeah, as a coach, if it's not going well, you've got to be flexible to changes some stuff up and 
I haven't talked about slowing the game down per se, but I have talked about getting more ball reversals. That slows the game down. You know, I we got to implement that. Uh, got to do it fast. Last question for me. You, you did talk about Doug competing. The fire he played within the second half was the most fired up I've seen him play all season. What what will it take to get that out of him from the get go? Because from the get go, it was a little more sluggish. <coughs> but if he plays like we saw in the second half, he oh, he was pretty good all night. He was he was honestly he's been pretty good the last three games in terms of uh, really becoming more vocal, more active. I think you just look at his block numbers, and I think you'd see. He's he's a prideful kid and he doesn't like to lose and it's it's bugging him that we've lost a little bit. So, uh, but you're right. I mean, there has been time in Doug's career here where he drifts. Uh, I would hope the current trend continues, and I can call it a trend because it's three games now where he is locked in and, and really super aggressive continues because that'll help us. You know, you, you go in the game like this. You're not going to put out every fire at once. It's just not going to happen. There are there way too many fires. Okay, so what can we fix the quickest? What can we do the quickest? And uh, trying to get those things done are priority 1A, and wherever that takes us, it takes us. You talked about um, the learning curve for TK and, and for Zach, and now the ball reversals. Have, you know, the offense has a lot to do with the point guard and trying to get out of their hands in the first half. TK looked like he was forcing a couple of shots there and you were said to uh, talk to him on the bench. What did you tell him? Uh, precisely what we talked about in here were more reversals. There was a there was a disconnect. I mean we had we had we had zero assists out of our point guards. Right? That's a problem. Just point blank. I mean, I'm not certain of that lumping it all on their heads, but that's a problem. I don't think I've ever been part of a game where my point guard had zero assists. Uh, we didn't get early injuries. We threw two passes away just trying to enter the ball to a wing where, okay, make sure the guy's got his hands up and looking at it, just slow down. And uh, it's just where we're at. I don't like it, but it's where we're at. And I gotta, gotta move forward. How much of that with TK could be maybe you know the conference, the the, co the coaches in the conference have a little film to look at him now. Maybe it, you know how much of it is that compared to him being a freshman? It's going to vary. I think it's certainly a combo platter. You pay more attention to conference opponents. We do too. Uh, there's more tape on him now than there was early. Uh, but as a player, now you make the next adjustment back. You know, I have one one small adjustment that he's made is he started taking really good threes and not taking bad ones. And now his percentage is up around 35% for three. So he's getting there in some ways, but obviously him and a bunch of other people, like I said, to single somebody out after this, one person doesn't make a 30 point difference. I can promise you that. How much thought have you given to, to give him reduced rules to got, roles to guys who are banged up? Gavin, Jordy, both guys appear to be Playing at something less than I think you saw it. I think you saw it tonight a little bit. I mean, Jordy had 22 minutes tonight, and uh, I understand you're trying to win games, but at what point are you? Well, I mean, you're not ready to flip the switch into full rebuild. We got to see what we got with these young guys right away. But at what yeah, I got to say it's a little early for that. Uh, I'm looking for the guys that are on the bench to step up and give me more. Period. I mean, who came in there tonight and screamed, I need more minutes? I, I didn't see it. And again, it starts, it starts in practice. And the other night, for the first night in a month and a half, we had 13 guys on the practice floor. So we could get up and down a little bit and do some of this stuff. Uh, That will help. It certainly will help. With Gavin and Jordy, these are, seem like nagging injuries. Do you think there's going to be a point uh, in the season where they're fully healthy, or is this going to be an ongoing saga? Gavin, maybe. Jordy, probably not. 
I mean, George Jordy was doing really good yesterday in practice, went out in warm-ups today and aggravated it in warm-ups. I mean, we've got to learn to play with what we have. We started the season out with two preseason all-conference players. We've got about 0.5 to 1 right now because of where Jordy's health is. That's a fact. So, how do you learn to play like this? Again, I think it, two times in conference play, we haven't figured it out at all. Three times in conference play, I thought we were, one time we were definitely right there, and we won it. The other two, we had a chance to win, and we missed some opportunities. So, it is super easy to go over the top at moments like this. There's some strong things that need to be said in our film session and in practice. But I probably have to, probably have to think about what needs to be said right now and what needs to be addressed over time. Coach, one, one last thing. Uh, what did Doug Taylor's point to uh, Someone on the offense will shoot a shot and they'll fall in love with the shot and they won't get back on the defensive <coughs> time. That's how you get those easy dunks or per se whatever. Have a, and there are multiple sequences like that tonight. Uh, maybe, are you more concerned about stopping the ball on defense and putting up points to some extent? I'm concerned with both right now. We weren't really good at either one tonight. We've been pretty good defensively at this point this year, but again, the to point at one thing and say, yeah, that was it. Well, I think you're putting your head in your sand about six other things, seven, other, eight, ten other things. I mean, I, I can't simplify it that much. I, I think if I do, I'm kidding myself and kidding the team. But how do you think when you do have a couple of things that went wrong, how do you think one can compound the others? Oh, it's the the, the most, <clears throat> the one thing in basketball we can all relate to is when the ball's not going in the hoop, there is something that lacks with energy. And you try like heck to get over that. And with some teams, eventually you do. Uh, I don't think we're past that with this team yet. We, we, how the game is going on the offensive end sometimes affects our defense. But again, it's a very, it's, Everybody's had that at some point in their career, in their mentality. Some people fight through it, and some people linger in it. And right now, we're trying to wallow out of it. That goes along with the, the perfectionist and analytical <laughs> guys you have in the locker room. It does. We have, yep, you're absolutely right. Does it feel like there are two or maybe more segments on this team pulling in different directions? Everyone's pulling hard. Maybe not uh, same, same I think with, with some of the young guys, there's still some lack of understanding of what it is we want out. Uh, and I think, again, that to some extent, that's natural. When you, when you play, but no, as far as... Everyone wants to get to the same point, but everyone is kind of, not everyone, but... There, there appear to be two or three fans just trying to get there through different rounds. Oh, I think that's reading a lot into it, Jason. I think uh, I will say this: we certainly aren't to the point where we are all on the same page one hundred percent of the time. The, the way you phrase that question makes it sound a little more devious than it actually is. I don't think is. it's nefarious in any way, but one guy thinks the best way for this team to get better offensively is to do X. Players A, B, and C think, no, but we got to do a Y. And I think you see that play out in some of your positions. Well, that's where I've got to provide a vision for what we want. And again, I... We're just not there yet. Uh, there's no other way to put it. And... I can't accept it until we are. So to follow up on that question then, winning 
is obviously the easiest way to get guys to buy into what you want to do. But there is no way. Whoa, 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 no, no, whoa, no, 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 no. That's not the point I'm trying to make. Let, 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 me, let me back up a second. What I'm trying to say is, is that when, how can you get guys to buy into exactly what you want them to be doing on the floor? Okay, you are not the central scorer right now. I need you to be moving the ball more. How can you get them to buy into that a little bit more in practice daily when it's this, not translating on the court all the time? <laughs> this has gone right way off the rails, guys. You're, you're literally taking one night and trying to read a whole season's worth. Have you been watching us this year? Yes. We've been pretty good. Yes, you have been. Uh, we're off by a little, but th that just... No, I don't, I don't like the inference of any of that. I, that, that how do you get them to play together? You show them how to play together and you keep trying to teach them to play together. It's everybody, if it was as easy as saying, all right, this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And everybody would just go out and do it. What the hell would we need to practice for, sure. right? Yeah. I mean, geez, we're doing this with guys that have come together fairly recently. We're doing this with combinations of guys we never dreamed imaginable at the beginning of the season. And we're trying to do it all without practicing very much. Mm -hmm. And what you saw out there was a direct result of that. So if you're going to go down the path of, well, you're not pulling in the same direction, you're not bull. Guys, I got, not only do I got guys bull in the same direction, I got guys that are rehabbing their tails off just to be able to get on the court and support each other. Yes. You are completely, every, anybody in this room is missing the point if you don't think our guys aren't laying it on the line for each other. I, I don't. This team cares. And that is something that I think is great about this team. And that that I love about your program. I think you care a lot. And that's oh, I care important. a lot. I, I care know. a lot that I'm not going to sleep very much tonight. I care a lot that I'm... I but I, 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 I don't know where we're going with these inferences. I guess if you want to clarify that, I'll try to answer it. But it, it started down the slope with you there, Arkley. And I... Jeez. Come take a step in our locker room for a second. Uh, well, we'll let you guys in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trust me on that one. That's not the issue. But if you want to try to take another shot at it, I will try to answer it. Okay. Good. Uh, just one more thing, just about the MAC in general. You said the other day it's very competitive and, you know, how a three-game run can really change a team's position. Um, but still, just with the way it started so far at one and four, uh, how would you gauge, not necessarily a level of concern, but where you see your team fitting in with how these other teams are, are stacking up in the conference? I think we've had two really bad nights. Uh, I think Toledo outperformed us at a lot of different positions tonight. I think we'll have to get improved dramatically to be able to go to their place and win, obviously. Uh, if this is where we are at the end of the year, it doesn't look very good. But we got time. We got time. I've been through a few of these seasons and the only way the only way it goes wrong is if we stop throwing. Period. Have you thought about maybe giving some of the guys that are injured a little bit of rest to kinda so they can catch that groove at the mid to later point of the season of the conference and get it going in the back tournament at all? Or As I alluded to earlier, you know, like Jordy played twenty two minutes tonight. So yeah, I mean we're we're doing what we can. I, I certainly have been open to resting them for practices. What about like sitting them for games at a time? Well, it depends on the injury. Some yeah. injuries aren't going to go away with three days, four right. days. Uh, I mean, I know Jason's been shut down for a certain period of time. What about you know shutting them down until they're at least ninety percent healthy, and then maybe trying to get on that run? Again, Dog. depending on the injury, it's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. I'm dealing with real medical facts that HIPAA's not going to allow me to discuss, nor do I want to here. So, uh, yeah, in a perfect world, that's great. But some of these injuries are going to be have to have to be dealt with after the year, and it's simply a matter of kids trying to fight through them so that they don't end their season right now. And a couple days here, a couple days there, probably. But if it were the answer, honestly, yes, I absolutely, I'd do it in a heartbeat right now. <clears throat> uh, and again, it goes back to, boy, we could spread out the minutes a ton if we get our bench to step up a little bit. But right now, that's not where we're at.
Just on, I mean, um, you said Gavin got a couple of nicks and bumps. When did that actually start to, to happen? It's just an accumulation. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty much. I, I can't pinpoint the time, but he's he's toughed it out pretty good for a while now. He's he's one of the toughest kids I've ever been around, so he doesn't complain about it. He doesn't, but I I don't think. If you go back and look through the tape, if you, if you look closely, I think you'll notice a little bit. His, his is one that maybe I can I can rest him at some point, but I simply need to get some other people playing better before I rest for a game or two. I asked James about this earlier tonight. Um, shooting the ball from the field, he didn't have as many chances, one of four, um, but he did get to the line and was effective from there. For guys who have been struggling, <coughs> out in the field, getting to the line. Is that a good way for them to get back in a groove and find a groove? Always. Yeah, like James, I mean. Always, yeah, he, the kid's a scorer, he was a scorer. He showed flashes in the first semester of it and he, coming off break, he got the stomach flu and uh, for two games was more concerned about controlling his body function than he was playing. And that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, so his minutes went down and he, Trying to shape his way back into form, but uh, <clears throat> as an entire team, you know, you want to increase your offensive efficiency, get the line a little bit more. 16 attempts tonight, only made 10 of them, but anything else? All right, thanks, thanks so, guys.